In today's video, we'll be looking at solving parallel solving systems. And then we have a question which says that 500 kilograms per hour. So we have a math to do it of 500 kilograms per hour of steam drives a turbine. The steam enters the turbine at 4580. So if this are turbine. It enters the turbine at 44 ATM pressure and 450 degrees Celsius at a linear velocity of 60 meters per second and leaves at a point 5 meters below the turbine inlet. So if this is the inlet, it leaves at 5 meters below at a velocity of 360 meters per second. The turbine delivers shaft work at a rate of 70 kilowatts. So this is the work. The work is done by the turbine, so positive. And the heat loss from the turbine is 10 to the power of 4 kilocalorie per hour, right? So the heat loss from the turbine, heat loss is negative. So negative 10 exponent 4 kilocalories per hour. When you say calorie, calorie is just a unit of energy. So we can convert it into joules. And now calculate the specific enthalpy change associated with the process. Now when you say specific, it means per kilogram, right? And the enthalpy is in joules. So we want kilojoules per kilogram as a unit. Because we need a specific enthalpy change, the focus is on enthalpy change. Okay, it comes out at atmospheric pressure. So P2 here is 180. Because we need the enthalpy change, we don't even have to stress much on the inlet conditions. If we needed, let's see, the enthalpy at the outlet stream. If we needed enthalpy here, then we can see that we are going to use steam tables to find the enthalpy at the inlet because you have the pressure and then the temperature. So you can go and find the enthalpy. And after getting the enthalpy change, we can add or subtract to get uh, enthalpy at the outlet. And however, this question, we do not want to use the steam tables to find the enthalpy change. If not, we would have just gone to read the enthalpy at the inlet, enthalpy at the outlet, and then we just subtract. We just have to set our open system equation so k minus ws is equal to m multiplying change in enthalpy plus change in kinetic energy plus our change in potential energy our k is in 10 to the power 4 kilocalorie per hour so we have to convert it into kilowatts right? because our heat our work here is in kilowatts right so now what's the conversion factor one calorie is equivalent to 4.184 joules so calorie divides calorie right? and then one r is equivalent to 3600 seconds so r divides r and we are left it 10 exponent 4 kilo times 4.184 joules all over 3600 seconds and then you can see our k would be 10 exponent 4 times 4.184 divided by 3600 so we get 11.62 kilojoules per second and this gives us 11.62 kilowatts so we move on to the next step. Our mass flow rate is in kilogram per hour. We need to convert it into kilogram per second. Right? One hour is 3,600 seconds. Our divide R, we are left it 500 kilograms divided by 3,600 seconds. And that will give us 0.5 nine kilogram per second so that's our mass flow rate our k is negative right so negative 
So now let's find our change in kinetic energy. Our change in kinetic energy, as we know, as far as we factorize our m out, we just have to find our kinetic energy with half v2 squared minus v1 squared. And then we divide by 1,000. I think I've touched on this in our previous video. We are dividing by 1,000 because we want to convert it into kilogram per kilojoules per kilogram, right? something like that. Because this will give us meter squared per second squared. And then we derive that meter squared per second squared is actually kilojoules per kilogram, right? No, meter squared per second squared is just joules per kilogram. So now if you want to convert it into kilojoules per kilogram, then you have to divide by 1,000. And that's why you are dividing by 1,000. You can go and check out this video to understand it better. So we have multiplying our V2 was 360 right? squared minus our V1 was 60. 60 squared divided by 1000. And then we get our kinetic energy to 0 0.5 multiplying 360 squared minus 60 squared divided by 1000. And then we have 63 kilojoules per kilogram. So our change in kinetic energy is 63 kilojoules per kilogram. Now let's come to our change in potential energy. So just like our kinetic energy, because we factorize our m out, our change in potential energy will just be g multiplying change in our height, right? and that will give us g multiplying z two minus z one, nine point eight one multiplying. So now our z two is our final elevation. So when we are using this as our reference, let's see, this is zero. Then our Z1 becomes five meters higher than that. When we are using this as our reference, then this is below that, so it becomes negative, right? So we'll just go by this. We are using this as our reference. If we have any line and then here is zero, here would be five meters above that, right? So our Z2 is zero, our Z1 is five. So z2 minus z1 will give us 0 minus 5. And that's so just like the kinetic energy, you have to divide through by 1000 again so that we can get the answer in kilojoules per kilogram. So 9.81 times minus 5 divided by 1000. So we get negative 0 0.0491 kilojoules per kilogram. So change in potential energy is negative 0 0.0491 kilojoules per kilogram. We have to substitute everything into the first law of thermodynamics equation. Now I want to find specific enthalpy, and then we say specific means kilojoule per kilogram. Already we've seen that our kinetic energies, potential energies are already specific because they are in kilojoules per kilogram, right? So that means we shouldn't multiply the m by everything here. So our q minus ws is equal to m multiplying change in h, change in kinetic energy is 63, and then change in potential energy is minus 0 0.0491. All these units are in kilojoules per kilogram. So when you multiply by the mass fluid, which is in kilogram per second, then we get kilojoules per second, which is in kilowatts. But because we need this in the kilojoules per kilogram itself, we wouldn't multiply through by that. Our Q is negative, so minus 11.62 minus our WS is positive, so we get 70. It's equal to our mass flow rate is 0 0.139 multiplying change in each plus. So now 63 minus 0 0.0491. Three, we get 62.951. Right? So we divide through by 0 0.139. 0 0.139 minus 11.62 minus 70. 
divided by 0 0.139. That gives us negative 587.194. And this is equal to change in enthalpy plus 62.951. So our change in enthalpy becomes so now because you divided by this, this and this will have the same unit, which is in kilo joules per kilogram. So minus 587.194 minus 62.951. We get our change in enthalpy to be. Negative 650. 0.15 kilojoules per kilogram. So now this becomes our specific enthalpy. So please subscribe and then share.